Greetings, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Sikiba Giba Lepwati. I'm an associate professor of history at Vets University. Um, and I was asked uh, to uh, present a summary of the Eighth Courageous Conversation uh, Conference, Social Cohesion or Social Distancing, the rise of new uh, pandemics. And here goes my summary. Now, the new COVID-19 pandemic has had a devastating impact globally, affecting many countries in the world, including South Africa, and devastating markets along the way, shutting down supply chains and impoverishing millions of people by the simple act of halting production and services through lockdowns. Even the heritage sector has not been left unscathed by this pandemic. One of the main effects of the coronavirus pandemic is that society has had to adapt quickly in order to deal with new realities of lockdown and social distancing. This virtual conference explores whether COVID-19 pandemic and the new realities of lockdown and social distancing that it has brought about augur well for the desired social cohesion both in our country and globally. It probes whether these new social realities will create or have spawned new social pandemics such as racism, social inequality, and gender-based violence, or if it has simply exposed the underlying social pandemics that have been more pervasive in some societies while just while lying just underneath the surface in others. Let me start by acknowledging all the presenters who have made submissions to this conference for sharing their fascinating insights and findings. This is an interesting combination of papers, a total of eight submissions made up of five video presentations that I've had an opportunity to view, plus three papers, which I could only comment briefly on, on them, solely on the basis of the abstracts that have been submitted to the organizers of the Eighth uh, Courageous Conversations Conference. All of the papers or presentations certainly force us to think more deeply about the social ills that the coronavirus pandemic has put into sharp, uh, into sharp focus, especially racism and gender-based violence, thus compelling us to engage courageously in conversations around them. I feel that all the papers presented at this conference have responded directly to the questions raised above by looking at a wide range of issues related to the prevalence of racism, gender-based violence, and other social ills that manifested during the coronavirus pandemic this year. The presentation by Lydia Chibwe advocates for education as a basic right for every child, even in the midst of a pandemic. And she calls for measures to be put in place to curtail losses suffered by young people in the educational sector due to the lockdown. The second presentation is by Lamini and Hingston. And this, uh, this, this gives a, a very detailed analysis of the pandemic of gender-based violence in South Africa, which is caused by a variety of factors, including patriarchal and cultural norms, misogyny, abuse of alcohol and drugs, toxic masculinity, absent and, and absentee fathers, and the leniency of punishment or sentences imposed on perpetrators. The two presenters suggest different ways in, in this social melody, in which this social melody could be corrected, for example, by engaging boy children in activities that could win them away from the negative, from negative masculinity, interventions from the home environment and the educational institutions and religious bodies. I do wonder, however, whether some of the recommendations have been carefully thought through. While some religious bodies could be helpful in dealing with the problem, other religious organization, organizations in this country have been found to, to be the greatest perpetrators of uh, gender-based violence, or GBV. 
Some high profile pastors are currently fa fa facing very serious accusations of raping or sexually harassing female members of their congregations. So some critical reflection on the recommendations is necessary. Other presentations or papers have explored the responses by some communities, including the heritage sector, particularly museums, to some of these social pandemics. Majority of papers, in fact, explore responses by museums. Some of these papers explore creative responses of museums to the lockdown and social distancing by employing digital media in the museums as a tool to construct your to construct a more equitable and sustainable future. This is the case, for example, in Seema Rao's presentation titled Lessons from COVID-19, Building a Better Future for Museums. In the same vein, Roger Layton advocates digital media as a practical solution in the context of the coronavirus pandemic in South Africa, when schools cannot visit museums as a result of the lockdown. Leighton tells us that museums depend heavily on access to schools for the income derived from school visits. In turn, these visits also help the museums to provide both formal and informal educational content that fits into the school curriculum. Unfortunately, the coronavirus pandemic has caused the immediate shutdown of schools and total loss of uh, these school visits to museums as well as of outreach activities, something that is likely to be a new normal for, a, for an extended period. This lack of access to schools, the diminishing of the food count and associated drying up of the income stream and opportunities for providing educational services and outreach have hit the core business of museums. It is this reality that has forced museums and uh, that has forced museums to rethink their way forward for educational engagement, which has only been limited by the lack of uh, preparedness of museums in the majority of schools in the country for, di for, for, for digital engagement. Leighton has come up with an initiative for an aggregator of museum content in South Africa called the One Museum. Now, this is a virtual uh, museum that started as a conceptual model in the pre-COVID-19 era, uh, more specifically in 2018. However, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, this virtual museum shifted the focus on preparing educational materials on specific subjects such as visual arts, geography, history, and others in line with the CAPS curriculum for uploading so that a link could be directly made between museums, schools, and school children to, en to, to enhance interaction. The idea of the One Museum Repository for Museums content is quite an innovative way of sustaining the core business of museums under conditions such as the uh, pandemic that we are experiencing as it seems to provide an opportunity for museums to raise income through online subscription. I do wonder, however, if there is a plan in place to address the key problem of the digital gap and resource inequality between the rich and the poor that is so endemic in South African society. While the online platform would certainly enhance the educational experiences in the well-resourced suburban schools in metropolitan areas, I wonder what plans are in place to cater for poorly resourced schools and townships and rural communities. Even where access to resources is not a big problem and learners have access to smartphones, tablets and laptops, without internet access or connectivity, not much can be accomplished. This is the reality in many rural areas where connectivity is extremely poor or non-exist or non-existent as a result of the legacy of unequal development. We have to be careful that novel ideas such as the One Museum Repository for Museum Content do not end up reinforcing the digital gap and resource inequalities based on class and regional differences. Moving from the local to the global, uh, to the global scene, 
The presentation by Sharon Snell explores the responses of some museums to the Black Lives Matter movement that reached new heights of mobilization during the coronavirus pandemic. She focuses largely on several museums in the United States that have expressed solidarity with the movement as well as on Black Lives Matter uh, protests in the United Kingdom that culminated in the toppling of the statue of the slave trader Edward Colston. Her presentation shows that the Black Lives Matter movement in this country uh, demands that Britain face up to its colonial past and that museums should educate the, citizen, the citizenry about the country's role in the slave trade. While some museums have denounced racism and their complacency in systems that perpetuate racism, others, such as the British Museum, have been called out for their hollow and self-aggrandizing responses. During the Black Lives Matter protest, Sharon continues, much anger was directed against statues which memorialize contentious historical figures such as slave traders. In short, Sharon's findings suggest that the Black Lives Matter movement has catalyzed a self-introspection process which museums are undergoing about their role in a post-pandemic society. And many are making commitments to do better and to become more inclusive in their representations of history and historical artifacts. I do wonder, however, if museums in the United States and the United Kingdom should be treated as a monolith, and whether there are any instances of museums that took a blatantly conservative or reactive position, uh, dismissing the demands of the Black Lives Matter movement. So can we really put all museums, you know, um, in one pot and say that they've actually uh, been quite responsive. What about those that are inherently, you know, reactionary, as indeed museums are products of uh, uh, people, and uh, surely they are also as ideologically driven in their conceptualizations as the people that make them. Uh, I think that perhaps, you know, there's a need to um, not to homogenize all the museums and say this is how they reacted. Now, this takes us to the presentation by Kopano Malebo and uh, David Larson titled Real Revolutionaries. Now, this grapples with the questions, how do we as South Africans respond to the socioeconomic inequalities that persist in South Africa post-1994? They ask the question whether the conceptual framework of race is sufficient to get us to where we aspire uh, to go as a society, where we aspire to be as a society. How do we challenge the relational uh, tension that continue to be experienced in our institutions such as churches, schools, synagogues, perhaps even families? Now, the two presenters argue that perhaps the solution to our problem of lack of social cohesion lies in creating hospitable spaces for serious uh, dialogue and robust discussion on the issue of race, where different people with different worldviews could place their cultural assumptions and worldviews on the table rather than talking past each other. Proximity, they believe, builds uh, relationships. Now, the final contribution is by Coral Bio. And her work ties in very nicely with Copano and David's presentation to the extent that it focuses on the South. Using an art installation titled Dreams as a, a Revolution or Evolution, Corral considers the revolutionized or evolutionized self as the uh, as the heart, as the heart of the process towards transformation, where one is no longer held captive by gender labeling and racial disparity. So in closing, racism, I have to say, is the biggest and most pugnacious global pandemic, and the Black Lives Matter movement has only brought this into sharp relief. In South Africa, 
incidents of racism are broadcast on our TV screens uh, and social media on a daily basis, the latest of which is a very disturbing video clip depicting graphic images of a white mob assaulting EFF members who sought to protest peacefully against the whites-only metric dance at Brackenfeld High in Cape Town on Monday, the 9th of November. Now, the video clip in question is evocative of the uh, white mobs in the southern states, such as Mississippi and Alabama, that sought to prevent the desegregation of public schools in the 1960s. It is quite disheartening that 60 years later, some 60 years later, uh, some sectors of our society in South Africa still have the courage to violently defend acts of racism in a country whose fundamental principles are based on non-racialism. It is quite ironic that 26 years into our democracy, racism continues to be a prevalent marker of our society. Uh, it is uh, also ironic that um, um, gender-based violence um, has become such a huge pandemic um, in our society today. We must double our efforts in creating and utilizing spaces like this one, that is the Courageous Conversations Conference, where we can courageously engage in robust uh, conversations and debates about how to fight pandemics uh, such as the ones we have been talking about uh, today. I commend the critical role that this institution, that is Msunduzi Nome Museum, has played over the past several years in providing a platform where contentious issues can be debated. We do not really know as much as we should about the link between the COVID-19 pandemic and other social pandemics such as racism and GBV especially in rural areas and communities outside the major metropolitan areas. This platform provides space for the production of reliable and trustworthy information that is based on evidence. By encouraging rigorous public conversations on the links between the coronavirus pandemic and social pandemics such as racism and gender-based violence, this institution is directly contributing to building a socially cohesive society and to make uh, to the making of an informed public or citizenry so vital to sustaining democracy we commend and applaud this effort many thanks <laughs>